All right, so more SRT4 stuff. So I really wanted to have the opportunity to do an install on one of these um, on a car. Um, I've installed them before and, um, you know, never made anything about it. Never actually had one new from, from DCR. So I took the opportunity now to actually buy one to install in this car, which is pretty nice. Um, here you go. This is the actual pivot rod that they give you. It's a high end with a rod that pushes onto I just lost the clip. So this is the clip they give you to hold it on. But it's a high end that they give you that fits in there. Uh, like I said, this adjusts in and out to adjust how far it actually pushes pushes in on the master, which how which is how far it pushes the slave out to disengage your clutch. Now there's only so much travel in the actual item, so. But anyway, this is what we have. Um, this is what we're going to be installing. It's kind of cool. They actually give you some uh, instructions. They tell you how to remove it. Let's see here. That's a separate. They actually have a two-sided. This is the side we want to look at. Excuse me. So it basically it tells you to uh, remove the screw that holds it in, which I'll show you. You want to take a screwdriver, you need to remove the dust seal, and then you need to remove the actual OEM rod that is down into the cylinder gently. So it goes through here. I'm going to review this quick. Here it is in case you need to see it. I'm not sure how much it's showing up on the film here. Hopefully that looks all right. So I'm going to pull the camera off the tripod. I know that it's an 8 mil bolt that holds that stock push rod together so that you have adjustment there. So I'm going to remove that bolt. I'm going to remove the part that's actually on the pedal itself. And then we're going to work on removing the shaft that is in the master that comes assembled that way. So here we go. Board here just so I could, uh, I didn't have my access to a, a clean floor mat. And cleaning this out at the time just wasn't an option for me now like I said we're gonna get up in here and remove the AM rod which you can see is right here there's our 8 mil so we're gonna take this plastic off this clip here bends this is kind of what happens and it ends up pushing on an angle and it eventually ends up damaging that down inside there So here we go, we can actually see that this has wear inside of here. This clip here is actually supposed to pop out, but it's like stuck in here. There we go, okay. So this, you can see, has wear on this lower side here. Try to set this down. And then you can see it's actually worn through right there on that side. So, I mean, that was bad, and it was actually starting to show some signs of wear into this actual part here. So now that we have this off, all right, we need to remove the rod that's in the master cylinder itself. It says we should use a small screwdriver or a pick to remove that. So I'm gonna grab that. I have here two different types of picks. I'm gonna have to see what the actual uh, snap ring looks like if I can possibly get it out with this. Now, it says to remove, there's a dust boot up in here. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on there. Snap rings right up in here. Here's the two holes here on the bottom. 
So I got to figure out what I'm going to do to get this out. I can take a pick here and push them together and possibly pull that out also. So I think I'm going to try that quick. Too bad. I actually used both of the picks, got one in each hole. I'm just going to set them off to the side so I don't get my elbow because they're pretty pointy. Now, right here is the snap ring. And we actually have that removed. Okay. So now they tell you to pull this rod out. We have that pulled out some, and hopefully you can see that. See the white part? That's actually the plunger. That's the part that you don't want to pull out. Now, that rod has a little metal cap with the indentation. Looks kind of like a cup with a big top, like a real flared bowl, okay? So that is the part that you need to separate. So it's going to take me both hands to get up in there. And I need to hold, take a screwdriver and come in between here right there hopefully you can see it with some light right in this area and get this to separate from the plastic on that rod smaller screwdriver it's really hard to tell but if you look at the tip it's just up in here with this one and if you look at the tips hopefully you can kind of see them this one here that i have now is actually pretty skinny i actually just stuck it up into here and gave it a little twist and we now have this removed so we're going to push the plunger back in and then we can get that popped out of there so this is the part that you need to remove all right right there okay now we need to get the snap ring off of here because we're going to be reinstalling that this looks like it was actually had repair at one time which is probably also a reason why this was having problems disengaging the clutch actually correctly and it should have been replaced. So somebody modified this at one time. Yeah. I'm going to grab a small pair of snap ring pliers to actually squeeze that to get it reinstalled and hold it up in there. I should flip them over because of the angle. So that would push the back in and then I went up underneath and pushed the one side with the screwdriver and then pulled the pulled the snap ring pliers out and let the spring pop. Now we're at that point where we're gonna see about what we gotta do to get this dust boot thing installed back in here. So if you can see there's our snap ring. Hopefully you can see it up in there. And then this is your dust boot. Okay, there we go. That's done. <clears throat> now we have the push rod right here that we need to take out. Okay. okay. Now this right here, I'm going to make sure it stays loose. This is going to go up in, and I'm going to slide this over the rod, and then we're going to have to put this e clip down into it here. So. Just like this. There we go. See? Installed. Now, now we got a battery done. So I'm going to change that battery out and then I'll show you what you got to do to get this clip on. So we now have a nice fresh battery for light to see up underneath the dash. Now, this right here just kind of slides over. Right there. I'm going to get a little sideways here on you. See if that works. All right. I'm just what I'm doing, and the, the camera does not want to cooperate. So we're going to get this done. Couldn't get the light to cooperate, and. Uh, screwdriver and then I tried this and I was like well you know maybe if I get something that's more pointy or has a flatter end so I got this little pry bar I held it with my finger and I was able to push it up with my other arm so we now have the clip up on the rod right there um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my hand up in here I can get a hold of the rod here right there 
just kind of spin it lift up on the pedal at the same time just get the play out right now is what I'm going for okay we'll bring the nut in now right now it's together I'll have to get the wrench and uh, well, actually, I got to start the car up, double check everything, see if it goes into gear while it's sitting still. As long as that works, that's doing what it's supposed to do. You're getting the clutch to press. So then I'll have to see where it starts to grab once I get the tires and stuff, and this thing's on the ground. Now, what I'll do is I'll take these and I'll grab a hold of the rod and I'll spin it this way if I'm looking up in here. And that'll make the rod a little bit longer if I wanted to press it more so it grabs further off the floor. Or I'll turn it the other direction so it grabs closer to the floor. So that pretty much is the conclusion of the install. And then once you finally get that set, that nut that's located up on here, you want to lock that nut in against this, and that'll keep that shaft from changing any kind of length. And there you have it. DCR clutch push push rod clutch mess is solved. Not too bad. Um, Sometimes they go easier than this, sometimes they don't. I've actually installed two other ones, but it's been quite a few years since I stuck one of these in. So hopefully this solves the entire problem. Based on the rod being modified and this thing having a worn out clutch fork, pretty much states that that was the problem with it since it had a new clutch installed. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps you out. See us.